What's going on, everybody? It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord, here with his good buddy, Mike Zuber and Dion from Dion Talk Financial Freedom. Good to have you guys here this morning. We are going to cover something that, holy cow, is probably 20 to 25% of the questions that we get answered is this one question. Now, usually it's not a question. It's usually more, hey, you're idiots. It's going to be this way. <laughs> Uh, there's but, a lot of confident people out there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. and why wouldn't they be like they've been in it for seven minutes um so anyway i wanted to talk about today and the purpose of this video is we're going to answer the question based on historical data is 2023 going to be worse than 2008 so mike you've invested a ton of time in putting together this amazing spreadsheet over 50 years of data I would defer to you and say, let's go to the data. Yeah, we, we'll absolutely will. But I, I want to be clear on a couple of things. My sure. my position as of October 21st is that 2023 is going to be worse than 08 on many, many levels. Okay. But when people have this conversation, they are passionately saying, usually because we're a housing channel, that housing is going to be worse than 08. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who invested through that cycle, that is hard for me to digest. Agreed. But again, on the economic level, worse, probably a lot worse. Um, so again, I, I have the data. We can really talk about this mm -hmm. uh, in detail. Um, but before we bring it up, uh, Dion, kind of what are your thoughts when we hear people talk about 2023 being worse than 08? What, what, what do you hear when you hear that? Same thing since our content so heavily revolves around one rental at a time, like we're literally buying rentals. Uh, people are asking, should I, I think it's, should I not buy because next year is going to be worse. And to me, that's, if it's right, let's, let's say housing next year was worse than 2008. It's the right time to buy. Buy and hold investors in 2008 did great. Who cares if your value went down? Rents went up in most markets. Um, I've invested every year for the last decade, planning on next year, every year being worse than 2008, diversified property locations, diversified tenant types, all of the ways that I've talked about being able to this year with all of the chaos and uncertainty and rising rates going on, walk away from a six figure job that I liked and not care. So yes, next year will be worse than 2008 in a lot of ways, especially for the people who have an income from a W-2 job and haven't gotten the cash flowing assets, haven't listened to the advice that we've been saying for years or in the last decades trying to get onto the property ladder. Um, so I definitely agree with Mike. I'm glad you worded it that way. I wouldn't have came up with that. It's going to be worse in a lot of ways. I don't think it's going to be worse for buy and hold investors. Even if you bought today and this was the peak and then it dropped 20% in the next year. Yeah. Yeah, so I, let's. Uh, let's go ahead I, I can I can honestly attest to the fact that uh, Dion was fully subscribed to the Dillagaff effect on leaving his job. It was. I I have no idea what that. What's word. beautiful oh, is that's stop. the second time Mike hasn't known what that meant. It doesn't even look I, it up. <laughs> I'll I'll text it to you, Bob. I'll text it Zoom. I'll text it like because I can't say it on the channel. Wait, oh, okay. You didn't even look it up. Come no, on. I don't care. Just, I've already for, I've already forgotten what the word was. Dillagaff. 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 Jeez. All right. Let's see the spreadsheet, my man. All right. Here we go. So one of the things I want to do is you brought up something in video number one today, talking about interest rates, since yep. I have the data. And oh, by the way, <laughs> we give it away for free. Yes. You can go get it yourself. Yes. All right. So we talk about interest rates. So, in, so again, folks, just so you know, this is not my made up data. We always list the source where we get the data. So if you want to argue with it, go look at the Fed or census or whatever. Uh, all of that there. So we talked about interest rates. How long did it take interest rates to go down? And this is what scared me. Zo Zoom, had to, Zoom had to go to such a degree with this document. Yeah. You, you even made it less fun. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, there's so much going on here. It's so like let's look at interest, land in this thing. <laughs> so let's look at interest rates in 78. They were 9%. Yes. So they're 11, 13, 16, 16, 13, 13, 12, 10, 10. Oh, Jesus. 10. Oi, oi. So it went until 1991 until we got under 10 again. So how many years is that? I think. Wow, that's a de well, over a decade. Well, so the yeah. entire 80s, the entire 80s were higher than 1979. Mm -hmm. 
And I think something or important to note there sorry, is they didn't go from 10 to 4. No. Right? They went 10 to 9.25, 8.39. They, they're not going to drop down like they did in 2020 because we're not, unless we have another something that shuts down the entire economy. So let's, so let's also, so I like to also talk about like real pain versus relative pain. When okay. we're looking at that, factually, the numbers are correct that it was basically 12 years that it took to get below that number right? Mm -hmm. It took 12 yep. years to, to dip below. However, it took six years to not be acutely painful, i.e. not just 10%, like one point higher, because that's the way it was in like the mid to late 80s. It mm -hmm. was really high for 9, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. <clears throat> then you see a massive 200 basis point shift. Yeah, but that's a good point. You were in a lot of pain for seven years you yeah, went 200 it? basis points higher from 78 yeah. to 79 mm -hmm. that that's that's what i'm calling that acute pain where people are thinking that these five-year mortgages and eh, five years i'll be fine you better hope it's uh, not 1978 yeah and and again mm -hmm. this, this is how i tie all of this together right rates interesting to me but then I actually look at transactions, right? The big thing I called very early and now people are agreeing with is transactions are going down. Agreed. So again, right, rate. So let's go back to 78. That was the last time they were below 10%. So we did 4.8 million homes that year. Look at this. Oh, we didn't Mike, get back getting, to- Think about we this. Didn't, oh my goodness. We didn't get back to 4.8 till- Oh, 20 years. Geez. Wow. Yeah, 20 years. So here's the question that Almost. I have. Wow. In the 70s, I'm not sure which came first, came first the, you know, the, the, the carrot or the cart or however that works. Huh? Um, in the 70s, we started having more people with two incomes per household. Yeah, sure. Before that, it was the one income can support the household. Right. And some will say inflation caused the spouse to have to go to work. Some people will say the spouse is going to work caused inflation. Correct. So That's right true. now we have massive inflation going on. Mm -hmm. And already a two-income household. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I've already talked to Sam and Bryn, and they'll be working uh, starting at the end of the Work the kids, year. side hustles. I yes. mean, they're they're four and three. It's time they start pulling their own weight. So I think that's reasonable. But yeah, so Mike, this is what I was talking about when I was talking to people and saying, if you just look at the if you just look at the rate, right? If you yeah. just look at the rate, it was six significant years of pain. Six, not two. It went from, you were at 9, 11, 13, 16, 16, 13, almost 14. It went back up and then 12 and a half. Okay, you get down to within a point, but then it hovered at 10 for five years. It hovered at 10. Yeah. It, it, this Again, yeah. I mean, that's why yesterday when or people talked to me about rates. Yeah, I mean- if I was a betting man, I'd bet they'd come down, but I'm not making, I'm not putting my money to work at that, right? I'll bet you a dollar, but I'm not going to put my hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollar mortgage on that. You're kidding yeah. me. And this is, this transaction thing is scary to me. I did not realize this. There's so much data in here. Transactions didn't get back to the 1978 peak for 16 years, yeah. right? I thought we were going to have a housing crash for a couple of years, right? The Fed broke housing, blah, blah. This could be a decade in the making. That yes. transactions are down. Yes. Let's just look at new construction, right? So new construction was 817 and 78. When did we break 817? Oh no. Oh no. It's like Mike, it's like at least 10 years, if not 12. It's a lot of years. Oh no. Because they couldn't oh, build. No. And look at how look at how 98. We didn't do it until 98. Yeah, 19 years. Oh. 19 years. That's and and Mike, look, do yourself a favor too. Look at nominal home appreciation. Yeah. Did it go up every single year, even though rates went from nine to 16? Yes. It went uh, up again, every it, year. It went up every year of the 80s. I mean, I, I don't I don't know what, yeah. This is it's the only crazy. one that really cries out is 0.8, and that's because people are off of 16% mortgages. Yeah. But every other year, you're still looking at Decent increases, 4%, 5%, 7%, 8%, 8 yeah. I'm. It's crazy. This is yeah. crazy. So this, this is, there's so much in here, folks. Again, the data sources are here. Go get them. So where are the housing sales, ownership, income, it's all here, home ownership. 
median home price right here. Right? It's all there for you. But let's go back to the question at hand. Worse than 08. And again, I think 2023 is going to suck. That is yeah. my technical economic term. <laughs> it's funny. There was an article on Business Insider today. It said CEOs think 2023 is going to suck. I'm like, where have I heard that before? <laughs> All right. So here we are. So this is 2008. Um, that's, it's crazy to think that median home prices were 204 grand. We did start our, down trick, our downtick in prices that year. Mm-hmm. Right, home prices went down, in, uh, you know, for four years. Yep. So again, that's true. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that happens, right? Because we saw the nine percent. This is one thing I need people to realize when you're trying to compare 2023 to 08. Do me a favor, compare it to 09. 08 is what all the idiots on TV talk about. 2009 was the worst year for housing. Yeah, because the real so- collapse didn't start until September. Yeah, exactly. So you had the first eight, yeah, you had the first eight months of the year that while they were a little bit pukey, they were kind yeah. of flat. They were kind of negligible. Exactly. It was more market dependent. And then in 09, it was everything hit the caca. Yeah. So, and again, we and we saw the Fed cutting rates and we still had price declines. Right? Look at that. Look at the mortgage rate. Yeah. It went it went down a hundred basis points and we yeah. still lost nine percent. Now, Mike, real quick. So one of the things that I contend is that. Everything I think is going to hit harder and faster from a decline perspective, but I think it recovers faster as well. Mm-hmm. My belief is, is that a major part of this issue really stems from the fact that it's going to be solely rate driven as opposed to market driven, i.e. prices on houses and stagnation based on the fact that there's a bunch more supply. I really believe that I think that we hit like that time where things kind of stop. Well, that's exactly what I think is occurring right now. This is phase two of the housing crash. This is where supply destruction meets demand destruction. I believe between, I called it September 15th or so month into it uh, until March 15th, it's going to be frozen tundra or whatever you want to call that. Yeah. Um, the, the only stuff getting done need to sell. So, you know, you can find some deals, uh, but come March 15th spring selling season, I think that's when mom and pop come out and just start listing and, and see where we're at. And again, if rates are down, maybe it's okay. But if, if rates are at 10%, which some, you know, I, there was a guy I talked about today calling for 10% mortgages in February of 2023, you throw a bunch of inventory on the market with 10% mortgages. It's, it's not going to be good. So I think that one of the other challenges too, and I did a video on my channel about this, <clears throat> homeowners being offered 10-year arms mm. and at 5'5". Five, five. Again, we looked at the interest rate. I mean, 10 years is a long time. Most people stay for eight, so maybe that's safe. But uh, again, I can only stress, I, I would, I, you and I spent, I spent nine months getting all interest rate risk off my balance sheet. Yep, mine was 14 months. I have no idea. I mean, it takes a time, right? Yeah, 14. And money, right? right? Nine Jeez. months and 14 months. And that was something where we were in it every day. Every having day. to set up appraisals, having to do this project and that project, making sure that you were ready to go get the appraisal, uh, making sure that rents were in line and that they were full units so they could get that, could help the appraisal. So it is a massive undertaking. And most people do it on one and yeah. we were doing it on swaths of our portfolio, 9, yeah. 10, 12, 15 units at a time. Yeah, absolutely. So if we're going to compare kind of 2023 to 08 and 09, the question, let's just go down the list. Um, new home sales. Uh, that, you know, it could be worse. I mean, I think we did in 2021, new home sales, we did 700. I think this goes down more than 50%. So yeah, we could, we could produce less new homes <clears throat> in 2023. I absolutely think that. Agreed. I, th- I think existing home sales has a three on it. So we're going to be much worse than 08 and 09, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think total transactions will be sub four five, probably sub four four total. I think much worse. Home appreciation. I have a hard time seeing national median home price being now 9%. And again, I want to stress that when people talk about 08, like the, it was an event, it wasn't an event. It was five years in the making. Correct. Um, this should be teaching people that even though we feel it, even though we see it, even though they believe it, even though all the YouTube videos are talking about it, 
even though it felt like the world was falling apart then, it fell apart for five years or for two years and then had to kind of get pieced back together to even get to a negative 1.4. Yeah, I agree. So then interest rates. Interest rates are going to be interesting. And, and what I want to do here is will interest rates drop a point? in 2023, right? January, 2023 to December of 2023. I think there's a g decent shot that they do not because of the fed. I think the fed is flat all year, but I think what happens is after the fed does their last increase in February or March is uh, the banks start competing right now, the gap between the 10 year and the 30 year mortgage, it's, it's almost never been this wide. So I could see banks being more and more aggressive. So I think rates might be lower December, uh, than January, uh, but but I don't know. But yeah, what do you think? Do you oh, know? affordability is going to be atrocious. Affordability in 2023 at the beginning of the year might be the worst ever. <clears throat> think about that. The worst ever. Dion? Well, it's an interesting flip from the last two years being almost the best time ever. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. If only people had bought them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think affordability will be the worst ever in 2023. Certainly the beginning of the year. We'll see what happens at the end of the year. But yeah, the Q1 of 2023 could be the worst affordability we've ever seen. Uh, incomes up. We don't need to talk about that. Uh, da, da, da. Unemployment. Unemployment. Will unemployment be 9% in 2023? I hope not, but anything's possible. Yeah. I think we're well, at seven or eight. Well, here, let's do this. Will it will <laughs> unemployment be up four basis points? So will it go from three and a half to seven and a half? Because that's yes. what we jumped roughly. Yes. Yes. I hope not. Yes. It's possible, but I hope not. Dion, what do you think? Unemployment go up 400 basis? That's like, I think that's like 5 million people unemployed. I'd, I I still don't see it. I, I think there's two, there's still too many jobs available for each applicant. There would have to be, we're going to hear about layoffs in sectors. Yes. And, and if there are some people who are just not willing to change the, the type of work that they work in, but I've got a few friends in the last few years where they wouldn't consider anything lower than $24 an hour because they could find remote work at that almost no matter what background they had. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to see that continuing. And, and I think that's going to be causing a shift in some of the States where that's not the normal wage where that's kind of above average. I think that's going to continue um, to employ people there where if you worked six figures and you were in a specific nation, you just won't work for less, won't change careers. I, yeah, I don't, I don't see it going above six. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Right. If I were to pick a number, I'd take the under on six. See our inflation. It was actually negative in 09. That was deflation. That's Kath Kathy Wood. Kathy Wood, baby, got your negative number. Um, we, you know, will we will we we be four percent by the end of the year? What do you guys think? C CPI headline inflation, headline not core, under four percent December of twenty twenty three. What do you got, Dion? I'm with Matt. <laughs> I think it's going to stay higher. Yeah, I, I Mike. So. They're finally starting to get rent real rent numbers in there. They're yeah. finally starting to get real. Like I said, I think there's still that outside shot. We're still in the eights, right? Yeah. Well, there's headline, yeah, eight. Two, yeah, head eight line and core is what six six or six four? Six 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 six. Yeah. yeah. So core is still six six. I still believe that as rents continue to come in, because I think these other things are retrenching slower. Mm -hmm. I think that we could still get back into the nines on CPI. We might not have hit oh. the high. Yeah, I think you're right, especially if energy and heating and all of that and food. I mean, yeah, it's Mike. Yeah, we two, we may in, not have seen the peak in two weeks. I was thrilled that I got under contract for fee heating fuel at four sixty nine a gallon, which is a buck and a half higher than I've ever locked in before. Wow. This week, five ninety nine. Oh my goodness! And that's in two weeks. It yeah. went from four sixty nine to five ninety nine. And we're still drawing mm -hmm. out of the reserve. We still have a tax holiday. Like there's oh, all kinds of things that are going to so go away dumb. that are going to make it yeah. go up. Exactly. A hundred percent. There's your stock guys. All right. Stock folks. Will this be worse? Look at, again, this is why I tell people not to compare to 08, compare to 09. Yeah. Stocks were S and P 500 was down 59% Ooh. in a year. Mm. How do you oh. like me now? Oh, man. That's painful. That is painful. Really 
what? And then it's so it, it, oh, and then GDP, we'll do the last one. GDP was negative two and a half percent. Yeah, we could get there. We could get there. It's amazing. So. What, what do you remember happening in 2010 that it popped to positive again? Mm. Was it just all the, was it, was it just all the money we were doing and stimulating? I remember, I think this was when they did the, remember the 8,000 credit for buying a home? Like you buy a home, you get 8,000 yeah, yeah, bucks yeah, as yeah, a yeah. gift. Cash for clunkers. Was, yeah. And then cash, cash, for, for cash for clunkers was also 5,000 bucks, I think. Yeah. So I think there was some kind of government stimulus, but again, this was essentially a bad five years, right? I mean, if you, if you accumulate this, what is this? Some is five. So GDP went up 5% over six years. That's less than a percent a year. That's not good. That's bull. That would be what they call below trend. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, um, I think 2023 is going to be worse than 08, 09 on many levels. Uh, I don't know about 9% price drop. That feels heavy to me. I don't think we get there, but who knows? S&P 500 down 59%. I don't know. That feels kind of heavy. Um, but for most other metrics, yeah, I think it's going to be, I think housing, I think housing's in a depression and it only gets worse in 2023. Dion? Again, I'm really concerned for the person whose only income is their job. That 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 should be the thing that people are focusing on. How do you how do you fix that yeah. right now? When again, the most viewed videos that get over three hundred thousand views a video is everything's going to crash. Don't buy now. Wait, wait, wait. Waiting is going to hurt people. In all likelihood, yes. Dion, tell everybody they can find you, my friend. Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I get a lot less views because I talk about why. I talk about all the reasons why you should be buying. <laughs> Mike, tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. One rental at a time where we do a daily show. Uh, would it be Sunday through Thursday now? Sunday through Thursday. We don't do anything uh, on Saturday, Friday or Saturday. And me and Matt will be filling the void. Yeah, I'm going to have to start standing in front of my mirror practicing that stuff. Dear <laughs> God, that's horrible. I don't want any more mirror time than I already have. And I think the main idea that we have here in this video is... I think Mr. T said it best when, what does 2023 look like? Pain. I think that's what 2023 looks like. It's going to be a tough year and uh, hopefully people are prepared for it. I know that a lot of people think that it's going to make a lot of landlord go belly up. I really don't see that being the case because a lot of landlords I talk to are pretty well capitalized. They have more cash on hand than they have ever had on hand. So guys, as I always like to say, we try and create great content for you. Please make sure that you like and subscribe and check us out on our live streams. Mike's au revoir of his live stream is tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, that's true. 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Make sure you're there. Feel free to ask questions. And Dion's live streams are 4 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. Mine are 11.30 a.m. Eastern time on Sundays. That's a lot of information, but if you think that's a lot of information, show up for those live streams. It's that much more. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. We'll see you in video number three. Ciao. Ciao.